Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have a review of episode 900, the greatest day of my life, Otama and her sweet red bean soup. And that title certainly doesn't disappoint. It very much does what it says on the box, but overall I do feel like this week's episode is certainly a bit of a step down for this new Wano era. And to be fair, in terms of substance, it's not entirely the anime's fault. This is a slower, more subdued and very Tama-centric portion of the story. It's just that I don't think these events should have taken anywhere near a whole episode to tell. And there's a lot of trademark Toei filler trickery happening here, which is very sad to see. However, there was still enough of substance to provide a decent episode. So the first half, which focuses almost exclusively on the whole Thomas situation is when well, it's up and down. I think there are some really great moments here and the standout one for me was when after everything, Tama finally accepted the sweet red bean soup and when she finally eats it and tears up, it is genuinely moving. It's accompanied by those wonderful tears, the great vocal performance and the standard emotional, but admittedly very well fitting music. It's great. However, to counter this, there was a lot of just plain filler. There's no way around this term this time. And what I'm referring to a sequence like the one where Luffy was trying to force Tama to drink the antidote and we linger on a close up of Tama and the cup for an awfully long time as Luffy slowly slowly moves the cup back and forth like like four times, with Tama then responding by slowly moving her face in the other direction. This is something where it just did not need to be as long as it was. Seeing Tama avoid the cup once, maybe twice, is more than enough to convey the idea to the audience that she's being problematic and it will need to be forced on her by Luffy. And the subsequent times go on to add absolutely nothing except time to the episode. And this is where people are going to be saying I'm being a bit too picky and overly harsh, but to those people, I want you to understand, I am not saying that this episode is bad because of this scene. I'm saying that this scene is a minor, minor problem that when combined with other minor, minor problems contributes to an overall problematic product. Sort of like the death by 1000 cuts idea. And another example of this is the portion where after drinking the antidote, Tama is asked if she is okay. And it takes a whole 22 seconds of watching her going, hmm, before we actually move on. Admittedly, this portion might be a Japanese joke that I just, it doesn't have any effect on me. So to me, it just seems like stalling for time. But the most egregious offender of this episode comes in the most of unlikely form being Batman. Well, Batman after he'd let himself go. So first up, I love Batman. I think his voice is pretty perfect and appropriately snivelly, but what was that joke of a fight? The beginning of his conflict with Luffy and Zoro is probably the worst thing I've seen of the Wano anime adaptation so far. And to understand where the problem lies, I'd like to go through it shot by shot. So first up, we start with Zoro defending a barrage of arrows. Not bad at all, aesthetically pleasing, so long as we move quickly to another shot, which we do. And that happens to be a close up of Batman. Sure, that works, pretty standard for anime, with the following shot being a close up of Zoro. Once again, pretty standard. Close up of the attacker, close up of the defender. It's a clash. Cool, let's move on. Oh no, all right, we cut to another close up of Batman. Sure, why not? But uh, right, of course, another close up of Zoro would then be needed afterwards because of balance. Now, the creative decision that was made next will stun you because it's another close up of Batman, followed by another close up of Zoro. In a bold move, the director did what I can honestly say is the unexpected and chose to make the next shot the fourth consecutive close up of Batman, followed by a fourth consecutive shot of Zoro. But hold on to your seats because this is where things get crazy as we cut back to arrows. Zoro defending against arrows. And because of the eight close ups in a row we've just had, it almost seems fresh to our eyes despite having seen it already. But to be perfectly honest, that's far too much of an artistic departure. As in the next shot, the director decides to move back to a tried and tested shot being a close up of Batman, then a close up of Zoro, then Batman, then Zoro. And to cap it all off, we have one final shot of Batman, but this time with dialogue and the scene is finally allowed to move on. And none of what I've just said is exaggeration. I wish it was. But in one sequence, we were treated to a total of eight of the exact same close-up shots of Batman with seven of the exact same close-up shots of Zorro. It is ridiculous and really sad because the rest of the fight sequence isn't that bad at all. There's a super cool slow motion piece by Zorro and watching Luffy activate armament Haki was cool as well. And there's a lot of other great stuff in this fight. It was just front loaded with crap for which there is no defense for. It is filler through and through. And look, once again, none of the things I've mentioned would be an issue in isolation. If they were the only thing wrong with the episode, they would not even be worth bringing up. It would be kind of like having a dog shit on your front lawn. One time is fine, not desirable, but easy to clean up. But it's a completely different story if there are a whole ton of dog shitting on your lawn because that adds up and impacts the overall experience at least for me. Thankfully, I think that this episode does balance out the bad with a lot of good. Like I said before, the scene with Tama eating was just beautiful, but there was also some great comedy in the episode as well. Much of it also to do with Tama. Like when she was gradually sliding back whilst declining the food from Suru, I found that adorable and hilarious. Oh, and speaking of, Suru was exceptionally well performed during this episode. When I was reading this portion in the manga, I never really got a feel for Suru as a character and she just sort of faded into the background for me, but the anime really brings her to life superbly and I particularly enjoyed when she got angry. Not to be outdone, there's also a great Zoro 
or a comedy moment in the portion where they were asked what their names were, and Luffy was about to blatantly state Monkey D. Luffy, and seeing such expression from Zoro, my god, it's a rarity, and watching he and Luffy having their silent conversation of looks was a great character moment for both of them. So I did actually have a lot of fun this week, but it was a very on and off episode. Lots of great comedy, some decent action, but packed with lots of poorly implemented filler. I haven't even gone into all of it. But I guess if there was a silver lining here, it's that this filler was placed in very inconsequential moments. But on the other hand, I also don't think that it's a great sign of what may be to come in terms of adapting Wano. But that pretty much does it for episode 900. Wow, 900 episodes of One Piece is insane. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but apply to other anime manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the episode. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.